Welcome back to Madison Square Garden. Rangers and Sharks set to go on a Sunday late afternoon, early evening in New York. Our closed captioning is brought to you by the New York Lottery. Hey, you never know. And our Audi goaltending matchup is a good one. Henrik Lundqvist to our right. 29 saves, three more in the shootout the other night after he allowed 12 goals in his previous two games. He gets the start for the Rangers, and at the other end, they've been swapping back and forth, Joe, and it's Alex Stalock in there tonight. Uh, he deserves to play. He's been very, very good. Both these goaltenders, Stalock and Antti Niemi, the backup tonight, start the season each with a shutout, and Stalock is... Uh, that man right there is Tom McClellan, the head coach. He says he's just as comfortable with either of these goaltenders. Todd McClellan in his seventh season as the coach of the San Jose Sharks, who are 4-0-1 so far on the season. Rangers 2-3, and three, and they'll start with the line of Dominic Moore centering Carl Hagelin on the left, Lee Stempniak on the right, Girardi McDonough on defense, and we're underway. Assuring the puck is teenage Mirko Mueller from Switzerland. This is McDonough. And just misses Stepniak, who was in front looking for the tip. And now Joe Thornton, 35 years old, puts it into the Rangers zone. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see if the Rangers can really jump on San Jose early. Again, San Jose is playing their third game in four nights and less than 24 hours since that win last night in New Jersey. And San Jose's been real good early in games. In fact, first period, they have not allowed a goal. Starting lineups brought to you by Infinity Luxury Cars that deliver inspired performance. Looking for Logan to turn, he's wide open down the middle, and his chip shot goes just wide, the glove side of Henrik Lundqvist. With a loose puck and Couture found it with plenty of open room. Battle for the puck, Sharks control inside the Rangers' zone, Nieto slides it across. That slot shot is an intended pass. It slides all the way through, and it's cleared to safety by Mark Stahl. Here's Patrick Marlowe toward the net, and that one deflected away as Couture comes through the slot. Rangers can't get to the puck, can't get it out of the zone. 61 is Justin Braun down from his right point spot. Finally, the Rangers clear it out and can go for a change. That's a good shift by that Couture line. They came out, put pressure on. This is a San Jose team. You'll see their defense all night getting involved in the play. Todd McClellan telling us before the games is the only thing that we know the record is good. He said, we are still giving up too many chances. Here comes Thornton through the neutral zone. Drops off, and then Jason Demers can't control. Rangers Thornton. have the line of Hayes, centering Nash, and Kreider. Pardon me, John. Thornton line right back on the ice. So they're out there against the Rangers' third pair of defense. And that's John Moore and Matt Hunwick as Rick Nash gains the red line and shoots in. Kreider. Can't keep it deep in the zone, so instead Ryan McDonough collects in his own zone for Jan Girardi. Battle tips it in, Rangers go for a change. We play two minutes and ten seconds of the opening period. Jason Demers, healthy scratch in last night's game. A 4-2 win for the Sharks over the New Jersey Devils at the Prudential Center. This is Tommy Wingles, his wrist shot deflected away by McDonough. After it was number 14, Chris Mueller. On the ice now, centering the line of Tanner Glass, has the puck and chips it in, and Ryan Malone, the left wing on the line. Glass throws a hit, Brent Burns takes the puck. Burns with a nifty little chip pass ahead. 25 is time again. He gets walled off by Hundwick, and now Tanner Glass to the puck. Ryan Chris plays it for John Moore. Moore in his own zone. Rangers get a partial change. Ryan Malone still on the ice. He tips it ahead and will eventually leave as Dominic Moore and Hagelin are on. Lee Stepniak will jump over the boards as the Sharks send it in. And it's an icing as Hunwick made it to the dots in time. And the faceoff will come all the way down on us. Well, the best chance thus far in this game has come from San Jose. Nieto ends up with the puck. And then this just kind of hits some skates going through. And Bounces out in the open, and Logan Couture is there. He's getting a little bit of pressure from Zuccarello from behind, and he just fires high and wide. So the faceoff to the right of Alex Stalock, won by Broussard. This is Matt Zuccarello all the way through. Pinching down is Kevin Klein. The line is Broussard, centering Zuccarello on the left, and now he's Louis on the right. Seventy-six is Araya Hayes playing in his third NHL game. And this is him with the puck along the boards. 
It's Hayes, Andrew Desjardins, and Adam Burrish. The fourth line for the Sharks. Andrew Desjardins dropped the gloves last night with Jordan Tutu. In an early first period fight. That one up the boards for Haglin. Taken away by Patrick Marlowe. Here's Stempniak. Tries it down low for Dominic Moore. Tries the wraparound. Stalock got over to the his left post, the Rangers' right post, and made the stop. Now back the other way for Patrick Marlowe. Cross ice it goes. Good defensive play by Stepniak. Back checking. And now Haglin with speed the other way, right side. There's Dominic Moore behind the net. Moore finds McDonough at the left point toward the net. And that went all the way through as Haglin was cruising through. Girardi down from his right point spot. Matt Nieto backhands it ahead, and now Logan Couture will skate it out. Takes a bump right in front of the Rangers bench. Well, Lee Stepniak, who is back playing in the defensive position, makes a real good play on Couture. This line of Joe Pavelski, centering Joe Thornton and Tomas Hurdle. Now Pavelski will take a lot of face-offs. Coming off his best year, he led the Sharks with 41 goals a season ago. Fiber trying to work on Brent Burns. Good play by the defenseman. Then forward, now back to playing defense with Dan Boyle moving on. Brent Burns. Andrew behind their own net. They'll start up with Kreider. Kreider gains the red line and flips in. Then off comes out and gloves it, and he will continue to play, handing it off to Justin Braun. We played five minutes and 22 seconds here in the opening period. Sunday late afternoon here at the Garden. Rangers and Sharks, no score. Big hit there by Tanner Glass. But the Sharks take the puck momentarily. Rangers have it back. Mark Stahl and Kevin Klein, the defense carry. That one tipped ahead by Chris Mueller. Mueller, Glass, and Malone on the ice for the Rangers up front. Glass for Mueller. And flip to center as time again backhands it. Chasing after it is Matt Hunwick. He's pursued by Chris Tierney, number 50, for the Sharks. Tierney, another young player for San Jose. He's just 20 years of age. Very smart player. Yeah, for all their veteran leadership, the Sharks have five players on their roster who are 21 or younger. Across it comes. Demers, slap shot, stopped by Lundqvist. It's on the goal line and swept to safety by Matt Hunwick. What a play. It was deflected on the way in and Hunwick saved the goal. All that close to the Sharks taking an early lead. Zuccarello after it. Broussard there as well. Now Marlow for Mark Edward Vlasic and back to center. Broussard backhands in. Stalock plays the puck, calmly off the boards, Girardi steps up. Zuccarello continues to battle, Desjardins able to slide it to Tommy Lindus who will back it up. And this Sharks team does not look like a team that's suffering from fatigue at all, this being their third game in four nights. Adam Burrish lost it, Rangers will move it ahead. Burns into his own zone, down with Moore after him, they wind it around, Hundred back out on the ice. Able to keep it in at the point momentarily, and now back to center to Jordan and Hunwick battle for it. Seven minutes and 20 seconds gone by here in the opening period. Not a lot of stoppages. A few scoring opportunities. The Sharks had the best one, and it was cleared off the goal line by Matt Hunwick. That one slides to the right of Henrik Lundqvist, and that'll be an icing call. And Joe, how close did the Sharks come? Well, very, very close. I'm sure they're going to take a look at this up in Toronto. Here comes the shot. It gets deflected. And Lundqvist able to get a piece of it, and there you just see it rolling and rolling. Boy, right on the goal line. That would have had enough momentum to go over the goal line, if not with the, the alert play by Matt Hunwick. There it is again. What a play. The puck has to cross the goal line in its entirety. And as you can see, that was right on the goal line. What a play. Garden crowd got another look at it on Garden Vision, and he gave... Matt Hunwick, another cheer for his efforts. Now Pavelski tries to break in. That went a little bit behind him. He installed after the puck. Out goes Rick Nash. Burton centering pass. The puck's off fine. Pavelski went down. No call as play continues. Tomas Hurdle had the puck poked away from him. He's there for another look. 
We won two battles along the board, and that one eludes Glenn Ferns, and back to center it goes. Burns up ahead, but only as far as Ryan McDonough, who's able to clear back to center. Mueller to Malone, who takes a bump there. By Uriah Hayes, and right back into the shark zone go the Rangers. Yeah, they like Hayes. He's a young kid, got great size, very good skater. 6'4", 2'15", 26-year-old Uriah Hayes. Four, battle for the puck behind the net. Up it comes from Matt Hunwick. Now Dejardin steps in. Uh, he will clear it to center, but only as far as Chris Mueller, who takes a bump, but dumps it in, and both teams go for a change. Here's Zuccarello off the giveaway. Zuccarello centers for Broussard, poking at it. That one along the goal line, and is eventually cleared away, and a delayed penalty upcoming. It'll be on the Rangers. Stalock goes for the bench. The Sharks will get an extra skater. I wonder if that's not going to be goaltender interference, maybe? The play right on top of the play. The puck nearly went in the net. That one touched up by Broussard, and they'll call a hooking call on the Rangers, and we'll sort it out when we come back. 10.46 remaining in the opening period. Matt Hunwick able to save the Rangers from a deficit. Well, the Sharks' power play got off to a slow start this season, but they scored twice last night. They'll get an opportunity here. Derek Broussard, who nearly gave the Rangers the 1-0 lead right here in front, gets a couple of chances, and then this right at the end, the hook. And that'll put him into the penalty box. Hey, let's go downstairs between the benches for Dave Maloney. Well, Todd McClellan, the coach of the uh, San, uh, San Jose Sharks, talked about the quick turnaround and the pace that they want to establish early. Well, don't kid yourselves. It's been a quick pace, but credit the Rangers. They've kept it simple. By and large, gotten out of their end. They've got to defend a dangerous power play here, guys. Yeah, this is almost like five forwards on the ice. Burns is the only defenseman. And what you'll see here, you'll see those four other players, those four forwards, all just crash the net. Yeah, the Sharks 5 for 20 so far with the man advantage scored twice last night against the Devils and they have the puck behind the net. Here's Marlowe to the point for Couture. Back for Patrick Marlowe, now down low Joe Thornton. Well, slice it goes good, deflection by Dominic Moore, got a stick in the way and the puck back to center. Boy, he does that well, Dominic Moore. You know, he moves himself, he gets himself in position that sticks in a tremendous spot. Ahead for Marlowe. Backs it up for Couture. Well, that's a Thornton. Therefore, lets it go through. Pavelski at the right point. Now down low, cross ice it goes. They open it up in the middle for Thornton, but then that closes up quickly. The shot didn't get through. Thornton still with the puck. Cross ice, one timer. That one stopped. Lundquist stuck out the left arm. Pavelski still with it. Pavelski back for Thornton. Cross ice it goes. Burns in front all along Marlow, and it's tipped wide by Couture. What a potent power play it's been in the Rangers on most of the time, but Tanner Glass able to possess him clear. Yeah, this was a power play that started the season 0 for 8. And they were getting criticized. They made a couple of changes with their personnel, and now they've got they've got it all going as we are witnessing. Five for their last 12 with the man advantage, which has 25 seconds remaining. To the point, kept in by Irwin. Uh, nope, he did bring it out of the zone, yeah. so he delayed offside. The Sharks will clear. The Rangers will take some time, and Dan Girardi slaps it all the way down. Yeah, notice down here, guys, how quick the Rangers have to be in their own end and how quick they are. Quick to pucks, quick to bodies here. Irwin ahead for Wingles. That one deflected away. And Derek Broussard out of the box. Teams back at full strength. Toward the net. That one knocked away again by Dominic Moore. Two good defensive plays. Kept in at the point. Good play there by Matt Irwin, 52. Now the Rangers will look to start out. Here's Haglin. Drops it off for Broussard. They have Dominic Moore with the Broussard sharp angle. Gloved down by Stalock. He skated away by the nerves. Now Hayes right side. Takes a bump from John Moore, and Matt Hunter takes the puck. Haglin not able to advance it. Goes all the way through, and here's the nerves down from his right point spot. John Moore chips it ahead for Marty San Luis, and he starts up. Around Blasic. Desjardins there. Takes a bump from Hayes. Now 
John Moore keeps it in at the left point, but his shot deflected high over the glass into the netting, and we have no further play. 7.47 remaining in the first. Still no score between the Rangers and Sharks. Welcome back. The upcoming schedule is brought to you by Lexus, the official luxury vehicle of the New York Rangers. After tonight, Rangers go across the river, face the Devils in Jersey on Tuesday, then up to Montreal, a rematch of the Eastern Conference Final. Rangers Canadian Saturday night, and then back here Monday for a meeting with the Minnesota Wild. All games start at 7. Rangers game night precedes each game by one half hour. 7.47 remaining in the opening period. Faceoff will be to the right of Alex Stalock. Rangers will have Broussard, Zuccarello, and San Luis with McDonough and Girardi at the points. Faceoff win for Joe Pavelski. Taken behind the net by Mirko Mueller. Off the boards and back to center. Now Thornton looks for Tomas Hurdle. He chases down with Girardi. Girardi continues on. Good play there by Zuccarello. Second effort to get it past Thornton. Rangers got to go three on two. Thornton with the back check, slows down Zuccarello, who has the puck. Puts it in front and all the way through as San Luis couldn't get his stick on the puck. Up for Pavelski, he chips it to center for Thornton. There's Joe Thornton using his body to shield the puck and he will start out 1,200 points in the NHL after scoring an empty netter last night. Joe said in the open, Joe, only Yarmie Roger has more. Now open side, right side is a shot by Marlowe, but a terrific defensive play by Mark Stahl. As we take a look, Sharks have really gotten out to a 4-0-1 start this year in no small part because of their first periods. Outscored the opposition 7-0. Yeah, not, not uh, giving anything up and scoring plenty of goals. Their problems have come. If they have problems, they're 4-0-1. <laughs> but according to the coach, their problems are at the end of games where they've given up some leads and given up goals in the third period. I don't think I'm overstating the obvious, but it is his team in the league. It, it, their, their season will be determined once again postseason. Don't you agree, guys? Yeah, 10 straight years in the playoffs, but haven't been to a conference final yet. Under Todd McClellan. And eliminated from the playoffs in the first round three times, including last year, when, of course, they were up three games to none. That one toward the net is stopped by Lundqvist, who scrambles back and is able to hold on. He got his glove on it initially and then was able to corral the loose puck. Now, a couple of deflections we've seen here in this first period, even though we've only seen seven total shots on goal. But San Jose carrying the puck, and then this one looks like it gets deflected right there. Lundqvist gets a piece of it and then just scrambles back. And a good job on the other side of the net by Nash to take Demers out of the play. Well, Patrick Marlowe and company with a pretty good scoring chance. I thought coming in, guys, that the Rangers had to defend this five. And we just saw evidence of that with Nash coming deep, picking up that weak side guy and eliminating him from being a factor. This range of line, Moore, Haglin, and Stepniak to the point it goes. Toward the net, that one deflected and sails just wide glove side of Henrik Lundqvist. That one put toward the net. And all the way back into the sharp zone, slow getting up behind the play is Tommy Windows, who was knocked down as the puck was headed toward Lundqvist. And Windows just cruising slowly to the bench. Yeah, a little cross-check, I believe, by Dan Girardi is why he stayed on the ice, got up slow, and had difficulty getting to the bench. John Moore winds it around. Haglund now slides it across for Dominic Moore. Rangers go three on two. Right side, Stepniak, that shot stopped by Stalock. I'll tell you, the uh, San Jose coaching staff working the officials here after the Girardi hit, but bit of a payback. Dan Girardi. No glass. That one deflected on the way in, so no icing call as the Jardin back for it. Mueller slides it up the board. That's Mueller going Mueller. Rangers try to put it in front with Chris Mueller, no relation, and then that one to center, race for it. Adam McDonough will get there ahead of Adam Burrish. The young Mueller was a first-round pick back in 2013. In fact, San Jose gave up a second-round pick to move up just two more spots to pick him. That's what they thought of him, and right now the comparisons are, boy, he could be another... Mark Edward Glossick, who played for the Sharks when he was 18. This Mueller won't turn 20 until March. Thornton battling for the puck with Broussard. Mark Stahl steps in to take it, and away goes Max Zuccarello. Well ahead of the play is Marty San Luiso, delayed offside. Rangers touch up, and play continues with 4.47 left here in the opening period. No score. 
Ciccarello bumped in front of the Ranger bench. Sharks take it back. Cross ice, Justin Braun, 61. His defense partner, Mark Edward Vlasic. As I mentioned, there haven't been many shots in the period, but there's been a good pace of play. Here comes Marlowe, pulls up. His shot deflects off Mark Stahl, goes all the way across the ice. And cleared back to center by Kevin Hayes. Just a step ahead of the play and offside, so we have no further play with 420 remaining. Still no score here at the Garden. As we take a look at Tommy Wingles on the San Jose Shark bench, get worked on earlier, what happens? Well, let's see. This is Wingles in front, a little tap. No, that's not a little tap. What happens is Dan Girardi says, all right, you can do it. I'm going to show you how to do it. Wham! So that's what drew the ire of the San Jose coaching staff. They didn't exceed the first one of Wingles, and Frontier Justice served in the trenches by Dan Girardi. You got to love it, boys. You want to go to those areas, you're going to pay a price. Todd McClellan. Marking at his troops here. It's been a tremendous pace. And, and Joe, you're right. You know, not a lot of shots, but a tremendous pace. Wingles, good buddy of John Moore's. They work out all summer together in Chicago. Officially four shots on goal for each team. Still no score as Nash flips it in from the right side. Bruce Daylock, here's Brent Burns. For Matt Nieto, but only as far as Mark Stahl. And now ahead for Marlowe. Logan Couture, finally able to possess the puck, slides it back to Burns, and it's tipped into the Ranger zone. Lundqvist plays it around for Kevin Klein. Klein and Stahl, the defense pairing for the Rangers. That one off of Chris Kreider's skate. Puck still inside the Ranger zone. Rangers can't clear. Now they do, and Sharks were still in the zone, so offside with 337 remaining. We'll experience blue shirt action in a suite at Madison Square Garden this season. A limited number of single night suites are available now. You can visit NewYorkRangers.com backslash suites, or you can call 212-465-6771 and reserve yours today. Sarge, Zuccarello, San Marino line for the Rangers. Tierney, Wingles, and McGinn. For the Sharks as Wingles is back on the ice. Hunwick through center for Zuccarello. Tried to get it back for Hunwick who headed toward the net, but he was walled off the play and the puck backhanded around the boards. Time again, tied up with San Luis, takes the puck, tries to find Brassard in front, hit off the side of the net, and the Sharks able to clear the zone. Now Wingles in a chase for the puck with Hunwick. No icing as Hunwick gets there first. Up the boards, but only as far as McGinn. To the point it goes, Irwin slots it deeper. Here's San Luis, backhand pass, but only to the point where Irwin keeps in his shot trapped and held by Henrik Lundqvist. There's no further play with 2.58 remaining. Well, that outlet pass went right over the stick of Matt Zuccarello back to Braun at the right point. Braun can really shoot it. Didn't have time to get everything on that one, just the wrist shot that got through to Lundqvist. Here it comes again. There's the backhand pass right over the stick of Zuccarello, and Braun smartly stayed in there and gets the puck to the net where Wingles was trying to get a piece. Kelly Vigneau took exception to the forecheck. He thought that uh, Matt Hunwick had got pulled down. The official come over and try and talk the uh, coach off the ledge a little bit, fellas. <laughs> <laughs> Some of the beautiful moments from down between the benches as the Sharks... Put it behind Henrik Lundqvist. Here's Fertile after it. Fertile and McDonough battle for the puck. Pagelski there, so Dominic Moore. And the Rangers wind it the other way for Dan Girardi. 2.40 remaining in the opening period. Still no score between the Rangers and the Sharks. That one chipped ahead. Sharks thought it was offside. Play continues. Here's Hagelin. Hagelin taken down by Demers. Stepniak to the puck. A bit of confusion in front of the Sharks bench. And... Now skated to safety, and the Sharks look to go three on two. Here's Pavelski for Thornton. Left side, his shot deflected by Girardi. And with more chips it up the boards. Hagelin loses an edge, loses the puck, but eventually gets it back to center. Joe Thornton's mother and father are here at this, at this game. They joined him here where they will go to Boston tonight, and they're going to spend some time with the family that Joe Thornton lived with when he was an 18-year-old Boston Bruin. Hayes with speed, up top of the puck, tries to put it out in front, good play by Kevin Hayes to 
sweep it to safety, and then chip it off the boards and out of the zone. Rick Nash was walled off by Burns, but continues on. And now Crowder slams it into the zone and takes a bump from Hayes. Uriah Hayes, and that one intercepted. Here's Kreider, finds Nash. That one slid across and stopped. I don't think Nash got all of it, but Stalock got there, and he'll hold on. Yeah, I agree, I agree with you, John. Stalock goes behind the net. Stalock's very good at, at playing the puck. Will handle it often, and will look around, likes to make plays, gets it up there, though, and then the Rangers turn into a real good quality scoring chance. And Rick Nash just can't finish. Well, it's a nice play hit by um, Hayes behind the net. You know, and then he bats the puck out of the air to Kreider. Good play. Yeah, the range has been very good with sticks. I talked to uh, made note of Dominic Moore in that early penalty kill, uh, John and Joe, about the sticks in the right position. Girardi, Stahl. Range has been very good in their own end of the ice. Boy, and you have to be yeah, against right. this team. They're, they're so dangerous. They come at you with so many different weapons. Matt Nieto's pass from Marlowe too far all the way down and icing the call with a minute 21 remaining here in the opening period. Well, Tuesday night on MSG, the rivalry comes to Rangerstown as Nash and the Rangers take on the Devils. Live coverage begins at 6.30 with Visa Rangers game night. It's the Rangers and Devils Tuesday night right here on MSG. Devils faced these Sharks last night, fell behind 3-0, then made it 3-2 in the third, gave up an empty net goal and lost it 4-2. But back in front for San Luis, and a good defensive play there by Braun, or rather by, yeah, by Justin Braun. Allen put toward the net and blocked away. Shipped up the boards back to center, Kevin Klein slides it back to Mark Stahl as we come up on the final minute of the opening period. Last minute of the play. And chips it up the boards. Rangers try to keep it in the zone. Now across for Justin Braun. He takes a puck. Puck still inside the zone for the moment. Now back to center. Marlowe slides it ahead for Wingles. And with one Chris will play it to safety. Line for Stahl. Mark Stahl with 35 seconds remaining. Chips it to center. He's touched with a high stick by Derek Broussard. So the faceoff will come back to center. Now we've often talked about, about Kevin Klein and how he's a smart player. Watch what he does, how he protects the puck with his body. Wingles tries to get over it. He gets in front of Wingles, so now Wingles can't reach him. And then by holding him off, he has enough time just to make a subtle little play, good pass to his defense partner to clear the zone. You know, I talked to Kevin Klein yesterday about the difference playing east to west. He said it's a huge difference. The physicality and, and being smart, how you use your physicality and certainly was evidence there. Good body position and out you go. Rangers dump it in. Chris Mueller back for it. Gets there first. Deflects the puck, but kind of last couldn't control in full. They continue to battle for the puck. To the point it comes to McDonough. His slap shot wide. Mueller after it. He tries to put it toward the net. Demers got in the way. Final 10 seconds of the opening period. Here's Girardi. Back at the right point. Toward the net. That one deflected on goal. Stalock stops it. Rangers whack at the rebound. It goes in. But the whistle had blown. The whistle had blown. There'll be no goal as extracurriculars break out right in the crease. Yeah, you know, one of the new rules this year, and they'll take a look at this up in Toronto because they can reverse it up there if they think it was a good goal. This is where they're going to give the officials help this season. Even though it was whistled as a no goal, they waved it off. But they'll take a good look at this upstairs in, or in Toronto. And if they think that the goal should have counted, they will let the officials know and they can change it. They've just let the officials know, uh, know here at Joe with the buzzer. It just rang as the... Uh Timekeepers across the way have picked up the phone, so. So here, here it is again. It goes off the glove of Malone, and then Malone has a whack at it. One. There's another one. One more. Right now, still underneath. They keep going. I mean, this is, you can see the puck, and it actually looked like Tierney yep. came back and knocked it into his own net. The question was, was there any time left on the clock? And had the whistle gone before that? Here it is again. Clock down at the bottom. Work. Puck's definitely in with time left on the clock. In fact, that really isn't even an issue. I thought, right. the, I, I thought the buzzer blew, but they're still... Did, they, did, did right. they put that back on there, or had the buzzer gone to end the period? No, no, the buzzer hadn't sounded. The, uh, the clock did say 3.2 okay. when the whistle blew. Okay. 
And you see here, Ryan Malone directs it toward the net with his glove. Stalock stops it there and then stopped it three more times. The only issue is going to be, did the whistle blow before the puck slid over the goal line? Referee thinks so, but like you said, Joe, well, let's again, take a listen. Yeah, and he didn't see. He was he was blocked off from that. And now they're, again, going to continue to get some help from, from Toronto to see what they had seen. And here's the answer. We got no goal on the play. Whistle went before the puck came in the net. No goal. There's your answer. Yep. Listen to this. Well, from where the referee's perspective was behind the net, he certainly couldn't see the puck because it was in front of Stalock's pad. So when he blew the whistle, the puck certainly was not in the net yet. And I believe that's well, the way it will be, right? right? It wasn't conclusive that it was in or out. So, I mean, from that last angle we saw, when you heard the whistle, you couldn't tell where the puck was. So you get roughing penalties out of it all, but hard to the net was Malone and Glass. Been a really good Ranger period, this first one. So Vlasic and Glass get two for roughing a piece. They will stay in the box. It's four on four. And as the period ends, there's a little bit of a skirmish with Adam Burrish taking on Chris Mueller off the faceoff. But the Rangers and Sharks will skate to the to their dressing rooms tied at zero. Really good period of hockey. I thought both teams played extremely well. San Jose coming off that game last night where they win in New Jersey in less than 24 hours had a lot of energy in that first period. And I thought defensively the Rangers had a strong period. No score. Downstairs we go. Al Troutwig. Okay, John, coming up on the Delta Intermission Report, we'll talk to the second hottest Ranger. That would be Derek Broussard with goals in the last three games. And a couple of nice chances in that first period. Bill Pito has the MSG 150 to take you around the National Hockey League. And Ron Duguay likes some things that Tanner Glass brings to the New York Rangers. That's all coming up on the Delta Intermission Report, a goalless first period. One other thing, we'll take another look on this football Sunday of Matt Hunwick's goal line stand. Stay with us. Derek Broussard is coming up. Welcome back to Madison Square Garden. Rangers and Sharks getting set to start the second period. Still no score. Rangers outshot the Sharks 7-5 in the opening period. Joe? Yes. Dave? Uh, Joe Pavelski became the fourth Shark to reach the 40-goal mark last season. This is our Cadillac trivia question. Who holds the Sharks' single-season record for goals? We will provide the answer later. You want to help the viewers a little bit? Yeah, Nudge them I'm going to go with Owen Nolan. Owen Nolan. Owen Nolan. Great goal scorer. Yeah. That, Joe is, Joe? A, that is a confident answer. That and is when a Dave, very And when Dave confident. comes up with a confident <laughs> answer like that, I just stick with Dave. Yeah. I, I ran into be, a, I want to be like Dave. I ran into a Maloney up here who said, don't ever disagree with my brother. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he's back. He must have got lost. Out, or there must be giving up free food up there. <laughs> he was eating, as a matter yeah. of fact. Yeah. There you go. There yeah. you go. <laughs> General Manager Don of the Arizona Coyotes in attendance tonight. As we begin the second period, four on four. Remember the coincidental minors to Vlasic and Glass for roughing. So we're underway here in the second period. Team skating four aside. This is Brent Burns. Through center, he has Thornton and Pavelski with him. Burns off the boards, plays it back to Pavelski. Now wide open is Mueller. Shot is stopped by Henrik Lundqvist, who tracks it and holds on. And there'll be a face-off in the Rangers' zone. Well, that rush by Brent Burns. Remember, Burns has points in every game this season. And he's gone back and forth from being a drafted forward to learning how to play defense, back to forward now this season, a defenseman. And here he is, 88. Got great size, skating ability, and he's he is one of the great rovers in the game. And what under the tutelage of Larry Robinson, who's on the San Jose bench, and Jimmy Johnson, two longtime defensemen, of course, Larry Robinson, the Hall of Famer. They're trying to work, continue to work with him and watch video to try and get him a little bit, a little bit better defensively. Maybe a lot better someday. Laid up the boards for Mueller, who plays it back down low for Joe Thornton. Thornton for Pavelski. Rangers have Stahl and Klein on defense. Broussard and Zuccarello up front. Here's Mueller. Looking around, puts it toward the net. And says, why? Klein after it. Instead, the Sharks get there first. Here's Burns. His shot is blocked away by Lundqvist with the right arm. This four on four so far has been all San Jose Sharks. Now Zuccarello looks to skate it out and 
Headman pass for Broussard off the mark. Line loses an edge, goes down awkwardly. Looks like he's a little slow to get up right in front of Dave Maloney. Uh, he got hit hard by the San Jose player accidentally. Yeah, he seems to be under a little duress here as trainer Jim Ramsey heads quickly down to attend to Kevin Klein. Meanwhile, Irwin with the puck. Cross it goes, and that shot stopped by Girardi. He slides it across for Broussard. Derek Broussard will back it up inside his own zone in the final 30 seconds of four-on-four -four hockey, which has so far been controlled by the Sharks. Here comes Logan Couture. Tries to find Marlowe, instead intercepted by McDonough, back to center. McDonough, real good defensive play. He came off the bench and surprised Couture on the play. Logan hands it off to Couture. That one stopped as Henry Blunt was deep in his net, got a stick on it, and skated to safety by McDonough. Goes cross ice for Kreider, left side with a step. Chris Kreider shot. Right on save by Stalock, and it's over the glass and out of play. Well, Kevin Klein, as he was making his way to the boards there, he, he loses his footing. And then watch Mueller, who was coming in for the hit, and he was just starting to move towards Klein when Klein's feet came out from under him. And you can see the knee, it looked like a Mueller makes contact. Well, Kaz is taking a look at his right skate, so he seems to be physically okay, Kevin Klein as a bit of an equipment issue, which is good news. Pretty solid, pretty solid player for this range of blue line. What do you think, Joe? That shot by Moore is deflected away. John Moore will get another opportunity. Yeah, he fires. That one sails wide. The glove side of Staylock. Dave, I do. <laughs> you left me hanging there for a minute, brother. <laughs> Can't get a word in edgewise with me, right? <laughs> John Moore with the puck again. Toward the net. That one stopped by Staylock, who holds it up after he makes the glove save, and he holds on to 11 into the second period. We generally don't see a face-off one that cleanly, and therefore my delay in answering you, Dave. And just prior to that, here's Chris Kreider. Chris Kreider said it's the worst game he's played as a pro against Carolina, and he said it's just not going to happen again. And there's the scoring chance, and here's our Coke Zero super slow-mo, quick wrist shots, and as we've talked about, the goaltenders for San Jose, both of them have been excellent to start the season, and stay locked with that save. Oops, as Stepniak gets tied up here with Tierney. Boy, you like to see Kreider just keep it that simple. Strong and simple in a straight line. Clean face-off win for Dominic Moore. Rangers won 9 of 14 face-offs in the first period. This is Stepniak, watched by Demers. He Stepniak along the boards. Good possession play there as now he finds Paul Hagelin. Hagelin spinning on Tierney, back to the point it goes for Moore. Now Stepniak. Looks for an opening, through Hunwick, down low for Dominic Moore. Now time again will look to clear the zone, and does as he takes a hit from Stepniak. Hunwick for John Moore, off the boards it goes, and right out of the zone with Carl Hagelin. Right side for Stepniak. Stepniak looks to drop, now holds, fires, that one stopped, the rebound saved by Stalock as well, and he holds on, so two good opportunities for this line, both stopped. Real good shift by Stepniak. First time he had in the offensive zone, San Jose clears it, then he comes back. And the patience, he's looking, looking, waiting for an opportunity and gets a good shot. And then Staylock again, look at his positioning, makes this save, and he's right back in a position to stop the second one as well. Great job by Matt Hunwick to support the rush. He's tapping for a pass from Stentniak. That forced San Jose then to pay attention to Hunwick. Got a little more room for Stentniak. Thornton goes cross eyes. Too hard for Burns. And now Kevin Hayes the other way. Here comes Hayes left side. The pullback. Waits. Looks. Oh, he had an open side, but he couldn't carry it any further. And Staylock was able to find the puck and hold on. Yeah, that ended up going, I think, off the stick of Joe Thornton. He steals it from Thornton and then comes back, or pardon me, from Burns. There's the, the type of play I talked about with Burns, kind of all over the ice at times, and then that one just might have deflected off the skate of Thornton and then right into the chest of Stalock. The play by Hayes. Hayes and Pavelski on the draw. That one put toward the net. Pavelski got in the way of that one, and it's cleared out for Tomas Fertel. Now Girardi. Tipped ahead by Hayes, and he will chase after it. Staylock out of the net. Winds it around, but only as far as Chris Kreider. Kreider battles with Hurdle. And now Mueller skates out. Mirko Mueller gains the red line, keeps it all the way around, and tipped over. 
And into the neutral zone, Rangers look to go three on two, but that pass a little bit off the mark for Hayes. Hayes and Mueller battle for it. Hurdle takes a hit from Kreider, but the Sharks take the puck. And here comes Logan Couture. This shot toward the net, stopped by Lundqvist, who goes down to his knees, traps it and holds on. Three minutes and 50 seconds into the second period. Now we're talking about Hayes and how he is now centering Kreider on one side and Nash on the other. You see their average height and weight. And then the new line of Zuccarello, Broussard, and St. Louis. What a difference in size and weight. My math tells me four inches and 37 pounds difference between the average of those two lines for the Rangers. This is the smaller of the lines out right now as Broussard carries in. He's got stall down the left side. In front it goes, and apparently an offside just before that. So ahead of the play and offside the Rangers, there will be a face-off in the neutral zone. Well, Tuesday night on MSG Plus, you can get highlights and analysis of the Giants' big matchup with the Dallas Cowboys. Bob Papa, Carl Banks, and Roman Oban bring you Giants Rewind. It's Tuesday night at 6 on MSG Plus. Lassard, Zuccarello, San Luis with Klein and Stahl. So Kevin Klein back on the ice. Good news for the Rangers as Stalock stops. Rangers go to the forecheck. Lassard takes in the neutral zone. Stahl chips it up the board. Then he and Couture come together. Good intercept there. And now Zuccarello quickly the other way. He has the puck taken away. And Sharks look to go three on two. Here's Couture right side. Cross ice it goes. It's behind Patrick Merlo. He takes a bump from Klein. And Klein takes the puck. Good play there. Kevin Klein looks to get it to the neutral zone and does, but only as far as Logan Couture. Neutral zone play continues. Broussard from the behind icing. his red line. Yeah. Shoots it down, so it's an icing on the Rangers. Just getting a little bit of pressure. And he ran out of room. And so wanted to get rid of it. Good play by Klein in his own zone, taking the band. That's Marlowe he takes out of the play. Marlowe keeps, keeps going, though. Keeps going, keeps going, puts him, enough pressure in him to force the turnover. Face-off win for the Rangers. As Broussard beat Burrish. And Marty San Luis backhands it off the boards to center. Demers for Burrish. Adam Burrish sails it in, gloved by Henrik Lundqvist, and he holds on. A rather slow start here to the second period with quite a few whistles in the first nearly five minutes. Yeah, I just think that both these teams are concentrating so much defensively and not trying to play conservatively, but they're, they're taking it, everything away from each other. And we saw in the first period with not many shots, but uh, a real good pace to the game. And I think both these teams feel that there's so much respect with the other team's ability to score that they've got to concentrate on the defensive part of the game. High up in the faceoff circle, Rangers skate away with the puck. Here's Ryan McDonough, two on two as McDonough gains the blue line. Drops it for Hagelin, didn't get all of it. It sails wide, stick side. Stempniak down low. Demers comes together with Hagelin. Classic and Hagelin battle for it. Now backed up for Jason Demers. Three points shy of 100 in his NHL career. Has two assists so far on the season. Has a healthy scratch last night as Desjardins chips it ahead. Crowd trying to get a little bit of the energy going in this game with a Let's Go Rangers chant as it's wound around. Only as far as Mariah Malone who puts it all the way through the net, through the crease area. It was Tanner Glass but wasn't able to get a stick on it. And now one-on-one -on -one the other way. Here comes Chris Tierney. Watched by Hunwick. Tierney cuts to the middle. Good play by Matt Hunwick. Stayed with the man. Got the stick there. Now here comes Tanner Glass. Glass along the boards. Two Sharks are there. Wingles and Tierney. Mueller battles as well. Ryan Malone there. The forward combinations for both teams. Battle for the puck along the half boards. And now put into the middle where it's skated out of the zone by time again. Again goes around John Moore, but Hunwick over to help out. McGinn continues on. Puts it toward the net. Lundqvist looked like it was falling backwards. Makes another save. A terrific second stop there on Tommy Wingles. And there's no further play. 13-31 remaining in the second. Henrik Lundqvist helps keep it scoreless.
Welcome back. It's time for the EA Sports Player Profile. And tonight we focus on the man making his Rangers regular season debut, Chris Mueller from West Seneca, New York, which happens to be the same hometown as his teammate, Lee Stempniak. Yeah, Lee Stempniak. He's only three years older, but Chris told me yesterday that he was a bit of a trailblazer. You know, West Seneca wasn't a hockey hotbed, but uh, Lee Stempniak was the first guy to kind of get out there, and it was a bit of an inspiration, and, and Chris actually played with uh, Lee's younger brother. So, a neat connection there. You know, and also he's part of a Calder Trophy winning uh, American a hockey league championship Texas team last year and I asked him how how, how that was I'll tell you guys he lit right up he just <laughs> said it was a great run best team he'd ever played on and all that good stuff and he was an instrumental part of that team six goals 11 points during that Texas Stars run to the Calder Cup championship as the Rangers in the zone offside well, especially the power play too he had 15 power play goals in the regular season last year uh, playing in the American Hockey League and the Rangers, I think, hoping that he might be able to help their struggling power play, but they haven't had an opportunity in this game yet. And he's a guy who plays in the middle of the ice. The coach told us yesterday that tonight's a night where you've got center Iceland playing in the position as his puck goes into the San Jose bench, guys. Now you've got Dominic Moore, who's been moved up to the third line now. Marty St. Louis, as we talked about, gets moved back over to the, mm -hmm. to the wing. And that man right there, Kevin Hayes, getting a little bit more ice time in the middle. And they have been good on faceoffs in this game. Very good. Yeah, Brassard, Moore, and Mueller have only lost two faceoffs all night. Still scoreless as we come up on 13 minutes remaining here in the second period as Tomas Hurdle for Joe Thornton who sends it in behind Henrik Lundqvist, gets through him. Pavelski gets to the puck. Now McDonough intercepts up the boards for Kreider. Pinching down and keeping in is Justin Braun. Battle for the puck continues, and now the Rangers start out. Here's Rick Nash. Left side. Kreider with him. Nash, slap shot. Stopped by Stalock, who is well out of his crease. Cuts down the angle and holds on. Real good play by Kevin Hayes in his own zone. They were strong on the boards. Kreider first. Then he gets some help from Hayes. There's Kreider. Watch Hayes 13. Comes over, takes Thornton, and then knocks the puck down. And then very quickly just moves it up to Rick Nash, who has some speed going through the neutral zone. And Stalock has been very steady in goal for San Jose. Stalock himself is a great story. Got stepped on by a skate a couple of years ago by Dwight King, playing in the American Hockey League, and his, his career was really in jeopardy. And has been able to fight his way back. Down low for Broussard. For San Luis, Marty San Luis shot is sticked away by Stalock as well. 14th save on the 14th shot by the Rangers. Broussard to the puck. Down low, San Luis. Now Zuccarello. Sharp angle with Broussard cruising through. And that one stopped by Stalock as well. And now the Sharks go the other way with Marlowe. Good play to stand up at the line by Mark Stahl. And the Rangers intercept in the neutral zone. And Broussard chips in. The young kid Mueller lost his helmet in the neutral zone. He's in front of his own net. Yeah, a collision with Mark Stahl. He and Stahl, neither one knew where one another was. And off goes the lid. Matt Hunwick able to keep it in, winds it all the way around. Zuccarello, first one there for the Rangers. His attempted pass to San Luis down low, intercepted and chipped off the boards. Race for the puck here between John Moore and Couture. John Moore looks up the boards, it goes. Design play, oh, Dominic Moore almost chipped it ahead of Demers. There's Haglin, tries to put it toward net. Instead, it's back to the neutral zone with John Moore. One of the Rangers bench and now chipped ahead by Burrish who will head into the zone. Hunwick tries to avoid the interference penalty. They play on. Desjardins with the puck. Along the right half boards. Now Uriah Hayes bumped by John Moore. Play continues. The battle for the puck continues. The Rangers come away with it. Here's Lee Stempniak. Left side, Mueller in a race for the puck with Demers. Mueller continues the forecheck on Vlasic. Now Ryan Malone. Across it goes for Girardi. That slap shot doesn't get all the way through. Girardi gets another attempt. Here comes McDonough down from his left point spot. Rangers forecheck. 
I think this one into the net, Chuck. Mm -hmm. Yep, this one. It looked like it went off Tanner Glass above the glass into the netting with ten and a half remaining here in the second period. Well, the New York Rangers are encouraging kids to go skate as they host Try Hockey for Free lessons throughout the Tri-State area. Beginners ages 10 and younger will receive a free on-ice clinic and the chance to skate with a Blue Shirts alumni like Dave Maloney, who has participated in that event. Great event for certain. You know, as we head to the halfway point of this uh, match here, I, I think this is the best 30 minutes of hockey the Rangers have played against certainly a quality opponent. When you talk about speed, and a bit of an issue here about the change as uh, Elaine Vigneault and the officials trying to figure it out. But, it, you know, I, I, I think, Joe and, and John, the Rangers want to play with pace and they want to be smart and they, and they want to play with support. And I think you can, on all three counts so far to this game, from this perspective, they've done just that. It's been a good game. Yeah, well, much of the conversation, though, during that three-game losing streak was their play without the puck. Here's Nash with an opportunity between the circles, and it's a flex wide. Off a loose puck, Rick Nash found himself with some open ice. That one came outside the zone as Nash headed back to the net, just barely offside. Now, right off the faceoff, Rick Nash, I think he tried to settle the puck. He gets in there to help out, and then he'll follow it up. And I think once he gets it, he just he tries to take an extra stride. And that shot by his goes off the stick of Braun. I mean, Braun just happened to have his stick down on the ice, and it hits the shaft of Braun's stick and deflects wide. I think that's another example of his conditioning. He's around the puck more than he's been for a couple of years. He's just been a tremendous player here for the start of the season. Oh, long shot by Burns, kicked out by the right pad of Henrik Lundqvist. Had to be alert there. Burns throws a hit on Zuccarello as Zuccarello dumps it in. Bad play there by Stalock, intercepted by Broussard. Derek Broussard for the Rangers. Had Girardi sneaking down, but instead tried to put the shot on goal. It got deflected away. Broussard taken down, no penalty called. You can hear, you can hear somebody screaming for holding. The play continues as McDonough steps up with the puck. That was Dave. <laughs> Finds Zuccarello, and now Marty Saint Louis from a sharp angle hits the post and crossbar. Play continues. McDonough, the backhander, that one stopped in front by Pavelski. Now Thornton will look to skate it clear. Close call for the Rangers as Saint Louis from his one of his more popular spots, that sharp angle. Banked it off the poster, crossbar. Battle down low with, with Marlow, but it slides ahead for Girardi. The He's Rangers, able to clear the zone. The Rangers have had some sustained pressure in the offensive zone this period. Here comes Nieto with room. Nieto's shot is stopped by Lundqvist, who held his post and makes the save and held the puck. 8.55 remaining in what is still a scoreless game at the Garden. Marty St. Louis looking for his first goal, nearly had it on this last shift. Sustained pressure again, and you can see Stalock was trying to get back into position, the goaltender for San Jose, and Marty St. Louis right off the crossbar and out the other way. And I was mentioning the Rangers with more sustained pressure in this second period than they had in the first. It makes you wonder maybe if fatigue is starting to take a little bit of a toll on San Jose playing last night. And then again, third game in four nights. Patrick Marlowe will step in on this faceoff with Kevin Hayes. Sharks win it. Sharp angle shot, kicked away by Lundqvist. The wraparound opportunity. Lundqvist gets to the other post and makes the stop. Two good plays there for Justin Braun. First the shot, then the wraparound rebound. Flying up the boards, Couture steps in. His shot toward the net is wide, with Nieto standing in front. Pass Marlowe. Now Couture tries to center. Instead, it's broken up and skated out by Kevin Hayes. Hayes goes cross ice for Kreider. Left side, that shot stopped by Stalock. He really comes out to close down that angle. Hayes showing patience, holding the puck. Now back down low for Kreider. Kreider, watched by Braun, now that one dropped off. Here comes Matt Hunwick right side. Centers, that one found its way to goal. Now Rick Nash to the puck. Classic pursuing him. Nash, good play there as he finds Mark Stahl. Right back down low and the Rangers go to work again. Hayes and Kreider. 
that one a little too far for Nash, who continues to pursue. Good job by Rick Nash. Fights off Braun and takes the puck. Jumps over John Moore's stick and back to the neutral zone. Yeah, this is another one of those shifts where it's sustained pressure by the Rangers. Here they come again. Dominic Moore, shot angle shot, stopped by Staylock. It's loose in front. Bursch swipes it away. Moore gets there first for Haglin. In the skates of Dominic Moore, and it's just chipped out of his own and down ice as the Sharks look to get a change. Nice job by Dominic Moore in the forecheck. He pulls the left shoulder of Burge to get better position. A wily veteran move. That pass eludes Haglund all the way down. It's an icing call with seven minutes, ten seconds remaining. What is still a scoreless game here at the Garden. Now Staylock sure has been good, hasn't he? I mean, if there, and there's no goaltender controversy in San Jose. Staylock and Anthony Niemi, who won the Stanley Cup in 2010 with Chicago, are very, very good friends. In fact, Staylock got married just two weeks before training camp started, and Niemi made the trek to make sure he got to his wedding. They watch video together. <laughs> They're wonderful friends off the ice, and they just keep playing, and it's been switch off. You get one game, I get the next one. That's the way it's been here in the early part of the season. It has worked so far. Each has a shutout, and they came in the first two games of the year. Niemi shut out the defending champion Kings on opening night, and Staylock with a shutout of the Jets. That shot by Haglund is stopped. Staylock has a problem, and Haglund chips it in. Staylock couldn't control the rebound. Carl Haglund jumped on it. It's 1-0 Rangers. There's that speed, but it all starts with the faceoff. The Rangers, as we talked about, have been good on faceoffs, and now the quick outlet pass, and everybody joins the rush. Haglund just decides to take the shot. And then what a job he does on Mueller. He lifts the stick of Mueller. Watch after the shot. Mueller, 41, goes to play it. Haglund lifts his stick and all in one motion finishes with the shot of his own rebound to give the Rangers the lead. So Carl Haglund, who had not scored a goal or an assist in the first five games, was a minus five as well, puts the Rangers on the board, scores first, it's one nothing. Now Glass after it, his centering pass just out of the reach of Chris Mueller and back to the neutral zone. So off a face-off win from the Rangers, it develops into a Carl Haglund goal that has given the team a 1-0 lead. Mueller, delicate little pass, and out come the Sharks. Lee dumps it in. It's stopped by Lundqvist. Round around the boards and right back to center. Over the reach of Vlasic, no icing calls. The Rangers go for a line change. So Thornton cuts back in the neutral zone. Ahead it goes for Pavelski. Too far. Now Lundqvist controls. Good play there by Rick Nash. And now the Rangers will start out with Hayes. Tries to find Nash a little bit behind him. Rangers in a delayed offside. They'll touch up. And Joe Thornton will skate it ahead. Here's the red line. Goes in, Lundqvist loves it down, and he'll decide to hold on with 5.45 remaining here in the second period. Paul Haglin is first of the year. John Moore, Dominic Moore, the assists. It's 1-0 Rangers. It's always a relief to get your first goal of the season. Carl Haglin does that to give the Rangers the lead. Good work on the faceoff. And then here comes McDonough. Just takes it. Or pardon me, John Moore. And then here's the one shot. Now here's the watch the stick. Good job by Haglund, not giving up on the play. Mueller thought he had a little bit of time, and the lift of the stick by Haglund. And by the time Mueller could put his stick back down on the ice to get the puck, Haglund had already taken the shot. For the first time this year, and now their sixth game, the San Jose Sharks allow the first goal of the game. They trail it, 1-0. Inside the final six minutes of the second period, and the Rangers win another face-off. They're able to clear the zone. Mr. the boards right in front of Dave Maloney, and now back to center. There's Girardi for McDonough. Rangers have Broussard centering Zuccarello, and San Luis is that one tipped all the way on goal. Staylock loves it and decides to hold on with 5.25 remaining in the second. Well, I know you talked about Marty St. Louis in the pregame, and he really does look more comfortable and it's interesting I know Derek Broussard intimated about how much they talk to one another and I think the longer you watch St. Louis play I think you have to realize that he needs to know where his mates are and his mates need to know where he is and he's very instrumental and very 
verbal in, in, in trying to explain where I'm going to be or where I want you to be. And new line mates. You know, it takes mm -hmm. it takes a little time to get to or get to a point where everyone can just react naturally without having to communicate all that much verbally. Good play again by Hayes to intercept. Now Kreider lays it off for Hayes. Hayes has shot his stuff. Again, Stalock way out of the crease to gobble up that puck. Well, what a play. Excellent work on the puck. Good forechecking by this line. Creates another turnover. Kreider with the puck. Fans wanted a hook and call on Thornton. None called. Rangers go after the puck in the neutral zone. And right off the bench, Lee Stumpniak. Hands it off. Oh, it didn't look like it came out of the zone, but they say otherwise, and it's an offside yeah. on the Rangers. That looked like it was right on the line. Looked like Hayes was able to keep it in. He's got that look of bewilderment, and so does the coach. The Rangers are forcing turnovers. They've been quicker than San Jose this period. Here it is again. Oh, that's clearly well, that's onside. That is clearly onside. That's on the onside of onside. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Somehow I know exactly what you mean, dude. Yeah. <laughs> Face-off win for Mueller, though. Kevin Hayes should watch Joe Thornton, because Kevin Hayes to me kind of looks like a younger Joe, you know, long reach, using his body, moving the puck. That one backhanded on goal, stopped by Lundqvist, a little bit of trouble in front. Lundqvist made a second save, and the Rangers able to clear. Nifty little touch pass there from Mueller to Malone. Now John Moore finds Hunwick. Cross ice it goes from Mueller, and he is a step ahead of the play and offside. He doesn't agree with it either, with 4.16 remaining here in the second. Well, it's been such a hard-fought game, and both teams trying to make sure that the other can't carry the puck over the blue end. We didn't see hardly any of that in the first period. And here in the second, though, the, to me, the Rangers have just had a little bit more of an edge, whether you want to call it energy or quickness or speed or tenacity. They've had a little bit more in this period than San Jose. Winger back it down there. Turner walled off by Stahl, and Dominic Moore takes the puck. For Hagelin, the only goal scorer on the night. Carl Hagelin flips it in. It is wide a goal, and it is an icing call with 3.59 remaining in the second period. To me, it looks like a team that the core of a team extended last year. Now, yeah, they're playing against, uh, you know, I'm not going to, you're not discounting what the Islanders, because the Islanders, I think, have played well. But this is a big boy opponent here in San Jose. And to me, this Ranger team looks like a team, or the core of a team, that knows what it takes to play well. And that's the first time I think I've seen that this season. Two on two battle behind the net. They bring it out in front. Couture with two stuff attempts on Henrik Lundqvist, who's able to stop the puck and hold on. Now, Dave, on your point, I think the fact that the experience that they went through last season to get there no question. gives you that confidence that, that you know and you know what it takes to play against the better teams. And Lundqvist certainly knows that as he comes up with a good save on Couture. No question. I, I, you, when you watch Lundqvist move, he seems to be moving quickly with a purpose. And, and, and moving quickly with a purpose seems to be what this team has done for the better part, particularly here in the second period. Battle for the faceoff, Rangers control, Stahl spins away. First attempted pass, knocked down by Couture, who takes the puck. Matt Nieto there as well. They continue to battle, Stahl and Kwan, part of that battle. Boy, what a shift by Mark Stahl. He had, he was battling two, three sharp players, stayed with it, wouldn't give up, and eventually he cleared the zone and was able to get a change. Justin Braun having some problem with the Rangers four check. Broussard eventually takes the puck. McDonough tries to make a move, almost lost the puck for a break, but was smartly able to put it back in the Rangers zone. Now Irwin for Braun. That one through the center zone and knocked down by Zuccarello. Here comes Rick Nash. Nash right side. Can he grab it? That one deflected away and time again spins the other way. Wingles back hands ahead, but only as far as Dan Girardi. Up the boards for Nash. Here comes Rick Nash. Tries to cut inside. Taken out of the play. No call. And the Sharks skated clear. Here's Wingles left side. Tommy Wingles working on Girardi. Goes short side. Lundqvist hugged the post. Made the stop. Right out in front. Hayes able to swipe it away. Nice job by Hayes. 
Good positioning, and it was cool and calm to clear the puck. Goes the other way, two on two, he and Nash. Nash chips it down low, Burns gets in the way of that. Back up the boards for Tierney, and now Pavelski in the neutral zone. Kevin Klein sets it up. 2-10 remaining here in the second period. A goal from Carl Haglin here in the second, the only goal of the evening. 1-0 Rangers. Haglin tried to shoot it into the zone and hit one of the officials. Now Burns after it. McMore after him. Pavelski almost had an opening, but instead, quickly the other way as Haglund chips it into the zone. Tomas Hurdle back for it. Takes it bump and step the out. Rangers with a good forecheck. Haglund takes the puck. What a great back pressure by Haglund. Turns it over at the offensive blue line, gets on his horse, and gets it back. Pavelski tips it in. Ian Thornton go to the bench. Rangers take the puck. Final 90 seconds of the second period. Lasik and San Luis. And now Burrish as well battle for it. And it comes back into the Rangers zone. McDonough quickly the other way, but it's deflected over the glass by Broussard and out of play. Now Rick Nash found himself a little bit of space on the right side. And now this is the thing that has been so apparent with Rick Nash. Watch him just drive to the net. Throws the puck into an area and then wants to go get it to get a shot, just lowering the shoulder. Interesting non-call as Nash tried to get there. Matt Irwin was defending him. Rangers win another face-off. There's San Luis up the boards. Broussard after it, so is Adam Burrish. With a 10 remaining in the second period. Nicolello throws a hit. McDonough pitching in deep. Irwin along the boards, as is Demers. Last minute of the game. Jason Demers winds it around. The takes a bump from Girardi. The battle continues. We've seen a lot of this. And now right out in front, Zuccarello with three shots at the puck. The crowd says it's in, and so does the referee. Red light comes on, and it's a goal for the Rangers. What work to finally score a goal, and he takes a cross check to the back of the head and neck after all this. The aggressiveness of the Rangers on the four check, and then just not giving up. Watch number 10. He gets he gets St. Louis with a cross check after all is said and done. St. Louis just wouldn't quit. Comes in hard through all that traffic once, twice. The third time gets a piece of it, and Staylock couldn't control it. One. Two, three, and then there you see the abuse that he takes. Marty St. Louis gets his first of the year and gives the Rangers a 2 nothing lead. Look at the work by that line. Three players all around St. Louis. That doesn't bother him. But I know we ran the graphic earlier about size. Sure didn't matter there, did it? No. Really okay. didn't. I tell you, it's the size of the... Size of the heart and the horse. They're pretty good there. The guys certainly scored prettier goals over the course of a Hall of Fame career, but <laughs> I'll tell you one thing. Where well, there's a will, there's a way, and he certainly willed that one in. Now the question is, or could be, did the whistle blow? Are they checking that again? Right. Was the referee in the process of blowing the whistle as he's explaining to the two men? Now it was well after the whistle. You could hear the whistle well after the puck right. had already crossed the goal line. So to me, this will Should stand. stand. Right. And it was an emphatic goal signal by the official also. Being explained here. No captain for the Sharks. Joe Thornton, one of the A's. He had his a captaincy review. taken away. The puck away. crosses the line before the whistle. We get a good goal. Yep, the crowd will tell you it's a goal. The puck crossed the goal line before the whistle blew. So it's 2-0 Rangers in the first of the year for Marty San Luis. At this period, the Rangers have had just a little bit more of an edge. More sustained pressure in the offensive zone. Not as easy for San Jose to get back and clear the puck out of the zone. Todd McClellan on the right, the head coach, now getting the explanation. He's saying the whistle should have blown sooner. And just give Marty St. Louis the 
so much of the credit for just getting there, taking a couple whacks at it. And you can see Staylock then had difficulty with it. I think you can make a case that both goals were the results of second effort. So Haglund backs, but he, unless Haglund jabs at the stick, he probably doesn't have the chance. So it's just that little extra step. I think it's been a huge factor in both these goals, fellas. Off the face off Nash shoots in and scores! And exactly what you were talking about, Dave. Another second effort goal for the Rangers right off the face off. It's 3 0. This almost looks like Staylock, who has trouble handling an easy play, is so anxious to want to play the puck that he misplays it, and then reaching to get control of it. The effort that Dave's talking about is right here. Look at the reach. Lifts the stick up to Burns, the defenseman, and then reaches again, and Staylock is not in good position. Wow, what a period. Two goals in a matter of seconds inside the final minute of the second period, and the Rangers lead it 3 0. They'll get to Rick Nash's here in a second. <laughs> They're still trying to announce Marty St. Louis' goal. Chipped up the boards. Nash slides it deeper. Final 10 seconds. And now Kevin Klein in the neutral zone backs it up. Rangers, hearing it from the crowd, a standing ovation. Two goals in short order late here in the second. Turn a 1-0 lead into a 3-0 advantage after two periods of play. And remember, the day after the Rangers score three or more goals in a win, you get 50% off your regular menu priced online order at PapaJohns.com with promo code RANGERS3. It's the Papa John's third goal replay, and what a goal from Rick Nash. Following up his dump in, is able to backhand it through for his seventh of the year. And it's four seconds separating the goals from San Luis and Nash as we send it down to Al Troutwig. Okay, John, on the New York Lottery Intermission Report, we'll talk to a man who had a weight lifted off his shoulders. Carl Hagelin scoring goal number one of the season. We'll talk about what looked like obvious chemistry developing in that second period for the New York Rangers. Bill Pito tells you what's happening around the National Hockey League with the Audi MSG 150. And then I'll be joined by Ron Duguay, who has his insights into what happened in that second period. But the Rangers started the slow build. They started to keep the puck in the San Jose end. And finally, Carl Hagelin scored to make it one. Marty San Luis scored to make it two. Rick Nash scored to make it three. And it's three nothing heading to the third. Welcome back to Madison Square Garden. We're set to start the third period. The Rangers off two late goals in the second lead. The San Jose Sharks by the score of three nothing. Marty San Luis had one of them. His goal with Rick Nash, four seconds apart there at the end of the second, ties the Rangers' record for the two fastest goals. It was Chris King and James Patrick from back in 91, but one of those goals was an empty netter. So this is the first time in Rangers' history, two goals, four seconds apart, without there being an empty net goal. Let's see what the Rangers can do here in the third as we're underway. That line that's on the ice now for the Rangers to start the Hayes line. Eight shots they've had in this game, four of those eight by Rick Nash. Pass intercepted by Pavelski back into the zone. His slap shot stopped by Lundqvist. The other way from Mueller. His shot kicked away by Henrik Lundqvist with the left pad. So two quick early shots from distance that challenged Henrik Henry Lundqvist. And now back to center. All started with a neutral zone turnover. Pavelski right back in. His shot stopped by Girardi. Looks for it. Stall taken down. To the point. Slid across. Plenty of room for Irwin. His shot stopped by Lundqvist and cleared. Behind the play shaken up, I think it's Dan Girardi. Boy, he's, he's had a tough shift. Blocked the shot once. Now trying to get off the ice. He can't because the puck's still in their zone. Get all tied up with Pawalski trying to box out Pawalski, and he boxed right into the shot. That's been drawn ahead for Couture, and he flips it in. Lundqvist steers it to the corner where Kevin Klein up the boards for San Luis, Paul Sison back to center. Behind the long twist, Klein wraps it around for Zuccarello, and the Rangers start out. Zuccarello, Broussard, and San Luis 
That one flipped in to the corner. Demers after it. Zuccarello and Broussard there as well. Now San Luis first one to it. As his first goal of the year on a third effort attempt, swatting at the puck from in the crease area. That made the Rangers take a 2-0 lead, and then four seconds later, Rick Nash scored. Here's Broussard with some room. Slap shot. Stop by Staylock who juggles and holds on. Now Dan Girardi taking a couple of deep breaths, hoping that the pain goes away. Here's a shot by Braun and Girardi. Oh, ow. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Trying to get Pavelski out of the way and takes that right on the side of the ankle. Because you don't think it's coming. Well, you know it's coming to the net, but you don't think you're going to get it there. If you block the shot, you know you made a decision to block it. Ouch. Which he had done about 10 seconds prior to that. <laughs> Rangers have the line of Dominic Moore centering Carl Haglund and Rich Stempniak. Haglund has one of the goals, the first on the night. Rangers lead it 3-0 as Hayes dumps it in, takes a hit from John Moore. Moore and Hunwick, the defense carrying for the Rangers. Hayes, Uriah Hayes, tries to put it out in front. To the point for Burns, that shot through traffic, sailed wide of Wingles and of Henrik Lundqvist, and now Carl Haglund to center. Chips it in, Dominic Moore goes after it. San Jose's got a push to their game here to start this third period. Rangers have to stay aggressive. Carl Hagelin and Uriah Hayes eyeing one another to go to the bench. Uriah Hayes sounds like he should have a chuck wagon, right? <laughs> He's a big kid. He is a big guy. With that dark look, too. Yikes. He spent four years at Mankato State. Native of La Crescent, Minnesota. You know what uh, not exactly, no. Probably vacation there on the, on the shore of the Mississippi River. <laughs> is that where it is? Uh-huh. Very, very south of where you're from. That's the tropics in Minnesota. <laughs> <laughs> right. Oh, a uh, person battle in front yeah. of the bench. Mueller was taken down. Chris Mueller and now. Desjardins, Desjardins now glasses after Burns. She's got a hold of. Oh, boy, this is a good, good tango here. Kevin Klein, got Burrish, now we got Tanner Glass. Now Glass and Desjardins. Desjardins. Mm -hmm. Desjardins got into a fight last night with Jordan Tutu, and he was, he was the one, and I'm sure Glass saw it. He crossed Jet. Yeah, they got uh, Desjardins uh, counted himself well last night. He's coming in with lefts here, but Glass is doing a good job staying with it. So three minutes, 11 seconds into the third period. The anger boils over, and they will head to the penalty box. Now uh, here's down in the corner, Desjardins and Glass. I think Desjardins wanted to pick a fight. I think he's trying to try and change the way this game is and get a little momentum for his team. And then you'll see Desjardins come in late. Watch 10, right there with the cross check. And Glass saw that. He'll make his way right to him. And by the time they're able to separate, Glass, it took him a while because he had a couple of players grabbing a hold of him, and eventually they get away. Both tired out, and they should be. Boy, this would be quite a series of these two teams played one. Well, this, this has been an entertaining hockey game on a lot of fronts. For two teams that really don't see one another, right? Yeah, I, I talked to Joe Thornton before the game, and he said, he said, you know, we go in and we have to play that tough game against the Devils last night. And he says, you know, and then I'm walking into this building, and he's going, oh, now i got to play the Rangers at 5 o'clock in the way they play. And it has been a hard-fought game. The spirits have been high, both teams. And again, I think the Rangers have slowly taken over this game from just having that little extra step in their game. And it's a Ranger power play, and it's presented by Volkswagen. So the original cross-checking penalty to Desjardins. Plus the five for fighting. Rangers on their first power play of the night. Interesting, you have Chris Mueller out here. That's his specialty. Right? He can move the puck. Very smart player. Can shoot it. 
Zuccarello spins back, loses possession of the puck, and it's cleared down by Burrish. In fact, yesterday after practice, McDonough and Chris Mueller stayed on the ice a long time, just feeding each other for one-timers, and they're on the ice for this power play now. Or Mueller was, he just made the change. Here comes Zuccarello and dumps it in. Salak pokes it, but only as far as Matt Zuccarello. Rangers 0 for 16 thus far this season on the power play. One of four teams in the league that have yet to score with a man advantage. The Jets, the Wild, and the Sabres, the other three. As Burrish carries into his own, but Couture ahead of the play and offside. The Wild had started off 2-0 with a couple of shutouts, and now in back-to-back -back days. They lose 2-1 last night to Anaheim, and then played Los Angeles this afternoon and lost again 2-1. And you see that only the second time in 35 years that the Rangers have gone five games to start a season without scoring a power play goal. I did see Dan Boyle before the game up here in the press box. He's, he says he's always been a fast healer. And he says he's always been able to come back sooner no, 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 than no. what has been estimated. And so he's, he's hoping that that's the case here with the broken hand. Stempniak with 40 seconds left in the penalty. John Moore, from right to San Luis. For John Moore, Stefaniak, Nash, and Clyde are also on the ice. That one in the low slot for Nash, but deflected away and cleared all the way down. That was the youngster Mueller, 19 years of age, on defense. Or how would you like to be 19 and get a chance to work with Larry Robinson, the Hall of Famer, and Mueller's stick. Positioned perfectly on the ice to break up that play. Last rush for the Rangers on this power play. Clyde winds it back around. Down the relay to go to Nash. Stall in the low slot, and that one deflected away by Vlasic. Here's Rick Nash again. Holding. Centers. Oh, what a stop. Kreider with a wide open opportunity. Stalock made the save. What an effort again by Nash to retrieve the puck, get it, hold on to it, skate, find a little opening, and then set up Kreider for the shot. He's back at full strength. Here's Joe Thornton toward the net. That one deflects up high. And the Blundquist might have done the header to make that stop. Now round around for Kevin Hayes, who's able to clear the zone. Deflected, so no icing. As Justin Braun backs up for it. Nearly six minutes gone by in the third period. Rangers with a 3-0 lead. Time again into the zone. Pavelski toward the net. That one easily knocked down and cleared by Dominic Moore. Moore charges up the right side. Again, bumping past and loses possession. And Pavelski will look to clear. Second an opportunity, it's Demers. New center deflected into the Ranger zone, but Matt Hunter quickly on it. And too far, right back into the Ranger zone. It's Hunter and Clyde on defense for the Rangers. With Fassard centering Zuccarello and San Luis. Mirko Mueller and Brett Burns, the defense combination for the Sharks. Cross ice off the skate of Patrick Marlowe. Matt Stahl after it. Those two fans are out. McDonough winds it around. Pass Burns and now race for the puck between Brassard and Mueller. Just about seven minutes gone by here in the third. Rangers holding a 3-0 lead. Good play by McDonough. Stepping up at the red line, anticipating the pass, and stopping everything there. He's been more like Ryan McDonough, hasn't he, tonight? I, I thought he, he was on his way back against Carolina. It's a good play by Hayes to intercept. Puts it in front. Another opportunity. He scores! They just might have a little something with this line. The size, the playmaking, and the finish. Here's Hayes jumping in. The, they put the pressure on. They forced the turnover. And Hayes is able to get his own rebound. There's one. Comes right back to him. And no hesitation. Quick wrist shot just inside the post. Congratulations, Kevin Hayes. Goal number one of your NHL career. Really typifies the way he and that line have played all night. Hard work, hard on the forecheck. Intercepting the puck and on a second effort able to put the puck in.
first NHL goal, and it's 4-0 Rangers. Up the boards for Stentniak. Through him, Hagelin clears the zone. Good play by Stentniak to put the puck in open ice. Here's Dominic Moore, left side. Takes the shot, tries to make a backhand pass, gets bumped down on the play. And Hagelin takes from Hurdle. Moore spins, puts it into the corner. Malone after it. Hagelin as well. To the point for Mark Stahl. Toward the net, that one deflected away. Chris Mueller on the ice. Hands off for Hagelin. Cross ice, it's Stahl. Line smartly deflects it into open ice for Mueller. He just worked the cycle, possessed the puck inside the offensive zone with Ryan Malone. For Stahl, slap shot, deflected, doesn't reach net. Beyond Hagelin, Mueller falls down and to the puck, Justin Braun. Wendell chips it in. The cheers for Kevin Hayes. An unassisted goal as he made the steal. He took two shots on goal, the second one, which beat Alex Stalock, and it's 4 0. Here comes Adam Burrish. Has to look around. Hunwick. Hunwick takes him out of the play, but he'll be called for an interference penalty. Rangers touch up, and it's an interference on Hunwick. Kevin Hayes with his first NHL goal. And it's a souvenir that he will cherish. Rick Nash collects the puck. 4-0 Rangers. Welcome back. The answer to our Cadillac trivia question. Joe Pavelski became the fourth Shark to reach the 40-goal mark last year. Who holds the single-season Sharks record? Dave. You said it was Owen Nolan. My Twitter followers are not only better looking, but maybe smarter than you. They're saying Jonathan Chichu. Your, your Twitter followers? Yes, you yes. Mean you I have, don't have many. You have more than one? Uh, the, the three I have, yes. 700,000 tweets <laughs> came back to him that said, Jonathan Chichu, Dave. 700,000. <laughs> well, a couple anyway. <laughs> so there, <laughs> Jonathan Chichu had 56 goals. 56. Wow. 4-0 Rangers here as they try to kill off the penalty. It was an interference call on Matt Hunwick. Here's Pavelski into the zone. For Turk. For Marlowe. Back to head for Pavelski. Stall behind the net. So are McDonough and Hagelin. Four Rangers. <laughs> Every Ranger behind the goal line. Now the puck comes out in front. Rangers able to get to the puck and clear. Good play by Carl Hagelin. Boy, just hard work around the front of the net. It's been a constant for the Rangers in this game. Here's Joe Thornton, right side. Down low for Couture. Back to the point, Brent Burns. Cross ice it goes. That shot by Pavelski sells wide. The glove side of Henry Lundquist. Now Burns shot toward the net. Deflected away by Dominic Moore, who's done that often tonight. Logan Couture. Down low for Marlow. Now Thornton. Burns cruises in. Now back to the point for Pavelski. That one sticked away by Lundquist. And Tanner Glass should be able to clear and does. Lundquist has been sharp. He's been sharp right from the get-go. Moving crisply in position, firing those pads out, he's been good. He stopped 29 shots on Thursday against the Carolina Hurricanes. Three more in the shootout. He has 26 saves on 26 shots tonight. To the point it goes. Now cross ice for Braun. Braun and Irwin at the points. This is Braun right side. That shot stopped. Good right pad save. Also got the stick down to stop it. Now Matt Nieto has the puck poked away. Rangers can clear it only to the blue line. The one-time attempt by Wingles. He didn't get all of it. Battle in the corner. Moore and Klein. And also Stetniak there is able to clear it all the way down. Final seconds of the penalty to Matt Henwick. Inside the final nine minutes of the third period. Zerwin slaps it in. That one gets caught up on the back of the net. And now poked off by Mark Stahl. Here's Broussard, calmly flips it back to center. Rangers content to do just that in the final eight and a half minutes, leading it to nothing. Pass stall, chase for the puck. McDonough gets there first, right back to the neutral zone, and here's San Luis. Tries to find Zuccarello. Zuccarello and Derek Broussard on the ice to complete this forward-on combination. Classic, pounded by Broussard. 
as is Tomas Spurtle. And we just calmly slide it back into open ice. And I think this line has gotten better as the game has progressed. Broussard and St. Louis and Zuccarello, I think, just finding a little bit more chemistry. Demers flips it over the glass and out of play with 8-0-1 remaining in the third and the Rangers leading 4-0. to Madison Square Garden. A late afternoon start means it's Kids Day here at MSG and they get to be very much an interactive part of the Rangers game day experience. Why the Zamboni makes some announcements, throw some t-shirts as well, why not? Stand on the ice next to one of your favorite players, 13-year-old Talia Dennis sang the national anthem and quite well we might add. She was great, really great. And it really has been a lesson for the youngsters on how to play hockey. So many second chance efforts for the Rangers in scoring their goals. All four, in fact, coming on second chance opportunities. Rangers lead it 4-0. One bit of news from the Rangers. Dan Girardi, who we saw struggle to get off the ice early in the third period, will not return to tonight's game. Dan Girardi on the ice for the first three Rangers goals. And part of that core defenseman that really had a strong game. Stahl was good. McDonough, as Dave mentioned earlier, was really good. The Jardin shot the puck away. We saw Girardi take that puck off the ankle at the scrum in front. And here's Kevin Hayes, who has his first National Hockey League goal. Another good job with the puck, though. He gets the puck down to the corner. And just great patience. Well, Tuesday night on MSG, the rivalry includes Rangers Town. Nash and the Rangers take on the New Jersey Devils. Live coverage begins at 6.30 with Visa Rangers game night. It's the Rangers and the Devils Tuesday night on MSG Network. Devils started off the season winning their first three and now have lost two in a row. Yeah, we got Wingles and, and McDonough tied up here. John Moore skates over to see if it needed to be broken up. The linesman took care of that. Yeah, Goaltender interference yep. here. Mm -hmm. Yes, Daylock lost his stick, so it looks like Ryan Malone will go to the penalty box. He claims that he was pushed in, of course. Now, just prior to the penalty, Rangers Wingles, McDonough, Wingles trying to finish his check. McDonough doesn't like to hit from behind. And so they tangle briefly and then here's the penalty uh, you can see from behind Hayes number 76 for San Jose a little clump to Ryan Malone from behind and that's what his argument was and he obviously did not win the argument here's Marlowe his shot stopped by Lundquist he's able to find the rebound and hold on Brett Burns headed toward goal a little snow shower by Brett Burns on Lundquist how would you Brett Burns, right? He's 6'4", 220, 225. He's the second biggest guy that type of forward. How, how about Dustin Buffalo? Like 6'4", 270. He's the same type. You know, both guys can be that rover, and both guys can fire it, and he's 40 pounds lighter than Big Buff <laughs> out in Winnipeg. Wow. And I mean, and, and Burns looks huge. I can't imagine Buffalo up close. Yikes. That one from Marlowe to Brent Burns. Slid out of the zone. They'll start again. Stylistically, you know the same. Both yeah. have played forward. Both have played defense. And that, yeah, that was uh, the bigger point was really the two guys. There probably aren't two guys like those two outside of those two in the league. I don't think Corey Perry's not quite as heavy. Can't play defense. Nor are they as good up front as he is. Right. Here is Burns at the right point. Looks for an opening. Slides it to Thornton. Jay Thornton between the circles. Back for Brent Burns. Waits. Logan Couture. Cross ice it goes for Thornton. He has room left side. Waits. Shoots. Stopped by Lundquist. Pavelski and McDonough whacking each other in front. Still battling in front as the puck is passed down low. Here's Pavelski. McDonough after him. Uh, Pavelski and, and McDonough. Now down low. And that one hits the post and actually catches Lundquist as well. What a stop as Lundqvist sprawled from one side of the net to the other. It ran off the post and hit Lundqvist as well. And the crowd appreciates what they see from the Rangers goaltender. 30 seconds remaining in the penalty to Malone. As Wingles battles, now Tomas Hurdle. Up the boards it comes. Irwin slides it for Hurdle. Back for Irwin. 
try to find Nieto in the middle, but another good play by Zuccarello. And here comes Rick Nash on the breakaway. Nash moving in. Wait, shoot. Stopped by Stalock, who's able to find the puck and cover up. Good play by Zuccarello in his own zone. First with the stick in the right position to block the pass and intercept it. And then second with the puck just going off the boards. Here it is again. Zuccarello makes the defensive play and then feeds Nash. And Nieto coming back who has great speed. Puts enough pressure on Rick Nash so he had to try and make a quick move and Staylock with a good save. Coming up to Foxwoods Final Five. Foxwoods excitement every day. And he here as the Rangers win another faceoff and the puck back into the neutral zone. Final seconds and now Ryan Malone out of the penalty box. Teams back at full strength. Rangers kill off their third shorthanded situation of the game. Inside the final five minutes of the third period, Rangers with a 4 0 lead. That one put back in the zone offside, and there's no further play with 4.55 remaining. And the Rangers comfortably ahead, 4 0. Strong defensive game for Ryan McDonough. Remember these two guys? They were teammates on Team USA, and look at them start whacking each other. Pavelski, watch, look at this high stick. Pavelski gets it up across the back of the net. McDonough. Puts it back and then goes after him. Finishes his check. It's all about winning, right? That Olympic thing was a long time ago, Dave, yeah, wasn't it? Yeah, it certainly was. And Joe Pavelski, by and large, has been kind of quiet here tonight, but he's one of a heck of a group of players in this San Jose team that, you know, as we talked about before, their season is going to get judged by postseason. Yeah, he has been named one of the four captains, four alternate captains for... San Jose, as John mentioned earlier, Joe Thornton had been the captain of the San Jose Sharks for four years. He was stripped of his captaincy in the offseason. They have not named a captain. And according to Todd McClellan before the game, he says, you know what? Here's what you need to play. He said you need players and you need a goaltender. He says drop the puck. Hmm. If somebody wants to take control of your team and lead you, go ahead. So it's not an issue for Todd McClellan to get a captain name or for him to Neymar. This time again, puts it toward the net. Uh, Hayes with a wraparound. One twist holds the post. Oh, took a shot on the side of the head, didn't he? Yes, yeah. yeah. Lost his stick. A little, little bit like we saw last week with Reimer. You get that head outside the post. Back the other way is Bassard chasing it with the nerves. Last it there to the intercept. Been a tough couple minutes for Henry Blomquist. Took a uh, puck up high. Looked like he was a little bit winded as that puck is touched with a high stick. Here's what happened with Adam Burrish. Well, Adam Burrish, who plays the game hard, and you'll see him just come in here late right there. Adam Burrish, and gets a, the right elbow. Makes contact with the head of Lundquist. Burrish comes in, and then just slides in, makes contact with Lundquist. Lundquist didn't, didn't like it. Seems to be, hopefully seems to be okay. You're watching the Foxwoods Final Five. Foxwoods excitement every day. Visit foxwoods.com now. When Burns toward the net, that one doesn't get all the way through as Kevin Klein got in the way. Good job by him. Desjardins then took him down as Lundquist covered the puck. Now that's one thing about the Sharks. They, they are working and trying right until the end. Yeah, you do get the impression, Joe, that this is a team through everything. You know, you talk about their offseason, they take the captaincy away, they're goaltending, this and that, but they really do have played with a purpose here. And I just think that furthers how well the Rangers have competed. You know, they've competed hard. Good job. Down low behind the net of Henry Blunquist, Stahl, and Hayes there as well. Oh, yeah. He's along the board, the Jardin is there too. Four players battle. Oh, the boards at third, and the Rangers look to chip it out of his own. Now Kreider will skate it out. Cross ice for Rick Nash. Kreider over skates, takes a, takes a bump from Brent Burns. With three and a half minutes remaining in the third period. Wingles to center. Good play by Nash to tap it back to his defenseman. Now Hunwick. Hunwick's had a good game, Joe. They're starting with sure saving a goal off the line yeah, that, in the first. That's a good point when the score, when the uh, game was scoreless. To the point for McDonough. 
Corbin had that one just wide, short side as Kreider was there. Stalock dove in his crease, wanted a penalty call, still complaining about it as the puck is shot into the Ranger zone. On him with Lundqvist, Nieto there, so is Joe Thornton. And the Rangers, at this point, know they're going to win the game, but this is important for them to finish strong and try and help out their goaltender. Strange cam off the boards. Henrik Lundqvist stayed there, made sure he covered up, gets a whistle with two minutes, 39 seconds remaining here in the third. Well, after the game, you can get complete post-game reaction from the locker room, plus highlights and analysis as well. It's all coming up on the Mercedes-Benz Rangers post-game show immediately following the action. Stay tuned for that right here on MSG. Al Troutley will host. We'll have a myriad of analysts to discuss what they saw here tonight. You'll hear from the Rangers in the dressing room as well. Dave Maloney will be downstairs. Glass it down from his point spot. And chipped over the glass into the netting with 2.32 remaining in the third. Classic Malone. Sorry, Dave. No, that's. Uh, I think what you're seeing here is we often talk about the difference between East and West, and the, the West is just a bigger, more physical conference. And San Jose hasn't turned away from anything here, up four nothing. I think that's the way you play when you're out West. No, they well they haven't, and I think you can you can also say that the, the Rangers have not Absol been out hitting this game. Absolutely, by any means. And you know, that's with all due respect to how well the Rangers have played. Yeah, they, New center, classic, runs into stall. Rangers take the puck. Kevin Klein banks it off the boards. Ross tries to leave his own, can't do it. Here's Hurdle. Tomas Hurdle between the circles. That shot to fuck it away. Ryan Malone got there. Kevin Klein battling behind the net. Chris Mueller as well. Pokes it ahead. That one put on goal as Lundqvist sticks it aside. Demers down low. Marlowe uses the body. Wards off Kevin Klein. Takes the puck back to the point for Demers. Cross ice it goes for Hurdle. His slap shot sails high and wide. Players battling in front. Now up to the blue line. Diving attempt to get the puck out of the zone by Mueller. And then finally Malone with his glove able to clear it to center. As we come up on the final 90 seconds of this one. Rangers with a 4 0 lead. Rangers are, are protecting this like it's a 1 0 lead the way they're playing. And more reverses for Hunter off the boards. That one doesn't clear the zone as Ty McGinn stepped in. Here's Bush. Haglin goes to him. Battle along the boards. And now Dominic Moore. Lines it around a little bit too far for John Moore. And McGinn's still able to keep it in the zone for the moment. Stepniak there to battle for it. John Moore goes down. Stepniak able to clear it to center. Last one minute the remaining here in the third. Burns for McGinn. Right down on goal where Henrik Lundqvist will cover it up with 48.7 seconds remaining here in the third. Your game recap is brought to you by your Tri Honda dealers. Carl Haglin, Marty San Luis scoring their first goals of the season. That gave the Rangers the 2 0 lead. Nash has his seventh. Nobody in the NHL has more goals than that. Kevin Hayes with his first career NHL goal. Rick Nash has seven goals in six games. Last year, he scored his seventh goal in his 23rd game of the year, which was actually December 29th. Quite a different start. Here's Braun. He goes cross ice. Irwin shot. Down with the blocker by Lundqvist. San Luis up the boards, just to the blue line. That one batted down with a high stick. So it'll stay in the zone. 35.7 seconds remaining. Yeah, I was talking Actually, about it should come out, and I'm sorry, yep, Dave, but right. it should come out of the zone because it, it looked to me like it was the San Jose player that knocked it down with a high stick. Yeah, so it is going to be the faceoff outside the Rangers zone. Sorry, Dave, go no, ahead. I was just mentioning, I was talking to Reg Grant on the bench just before warm-up, and I was asking him about Nash and, and the conditioning, and he said a couple things. You cannot discount the concussion impact on an athlete. And simply put, he had a shorter summer, but he worked harder. And uh, you can certainly see it in his game. And boy, he's been really good here early, Rick Nash. Red Grant, the very valuable strength and conditioning coach of the Rangers, who does such a yeoman job of getting these players in proper game shape and certainly deserves a lot of the credit for what Rick Nash has shown so far. As the final seconds tick off the clock, battle for the puck in the corner. Ranger crowd coming to their feet. Wingles puts one more shot as Kevin Klein got hit in the face. 
and the whistle blows with 1.6 seconds remaining. Klein went down. You see him doubled over, holding maybe his mouth. That was the puck yeah. from Wingles. I believe it was Wingles who just tried to throw it from behind the goal line. Throw it at Lundqvist and hope for a lucky bounce to try and break this shutout. Here it comes again. Ball goes off the stick. And it, it, pardon me, it wasn't Wingles. It was Desjardins. And it was a def deflected attempt to get it to the front of the net, right in the mouth. So he'll go off for repairs. One more face-off win for the Rangers, and that is it. Henrik Lundqvist with the shutout. 51st of his career and the first one this season. And the Rangers out to congratulate him after a most satisfying 4-0 win over the Sharks here on Garden Ice. When you compare this game to the other games that the Rangers have played to this point, the previous five, there is no comparison with the way the Rangers did just about everything right in this game. They worked, they competed, they talked about second efforts on some of those goals. They, the way they were able to find their game on the four check and put pressure on the second period. Lundqvist was great. The group of defensemen, uh, again, the group of defensemen were really good. So after giving up 17 goals in a three-game span, the Rangers give up one to the Hurricanes and none to the San Jose Sharks here today. And Kevin Hayes, certainly one of the focal points of this celebration, scoring his first goal in the National Hockey League. And Joe, you mentioned defensive zone coverages, second efforts, strong forechecking. The face-off numbers were incredible from a team that has really struggled with face-offs throughout the early part of the season. Our three stars of the game are brought to you by your Mercedes-Benz Tri-State dealers. Visit on the web at searchmercedes.com. Well, the Rangers had a lot of players that could have been chosen as one of the three stars. Henrik Lundqvist is number three. Really? I think somebody read these in reverse order. <laughs> the second he got the shutout, right? Third star of the game, Henrik Lundqvist. The second star of the game with his NHL leading seventh goal of the season. And a terrific second effort goal. Four seconds between goals from him and Marty St. Louis. Rick Nash, the number two star of the game. And tonight's first star, the man who scored the first goal of the game. And what an important one it was in the second period. His first of the season, Carl Hagelin, the number one star on the night. And a night for the Rangers to feel confident not only in how they played, but from where they go from here. Rangers four and the Sharks nothing. The celebration for Henrik Lundqvist. We've got more to come from the Garden in just a moment.